Hey, hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and I've been reading your comments. You guys seem to want me to revive an old robot of mine. That's right, it's Don't Need Roads. This is my 150 gram drum spinning robot and uh, it's been almost two years since the last time I built and fought a version of this robot. And in that time, I have learned a lot about building spinners, uh, mostly with the design and development of This Is A Party. I've learned a crazy amount uh, off of what I used to know here. So hopefully we can start trying to port some of these learnings from This Is A Party over into Don't Need Roads to build up this new version. Most noticeably, we're going to be moving over the bigger weapon motor. Now, I don't actually have the original weapon motor still in Don't Need Roads, but it was tiny in comparison to these 1806s that I've used in This Is A Party. Uh, I've also, I used to run a belt drive over here. You can see the rubber band over this side and I think it actually led to a lack of power. So I want a better system for transferring energy out to the drum than this old belt drive. And obviously in This Is A Party we used a direct drive system which worked really really well and transferred a lot of energy for a lot of the fights. The other thing that we have in here is these DF Robot uh, N20 gear motors with an actual ESC attached to the back of them. These things save a lot of waste and space. You can see there is a crazy amount of room inside Don't Need Roads because this thing originally had my Arduino set up and some batteries in it, which at the time was the smallest and the lightest that I could do, but these days we can do much smaller and much lighter by switching back over to actual RC gear. So in actual fact, most of this electronic stack up, I think that's in here, is probably gonna get ported directly over to the new version of Don't Need Roads. But can we actually do this? Can we direct drive this drum with a 1806 motor? Let's take a look at some CAT. Yeah, no, not really. So this is the best I've come up with in CAD. This is moving everything so that the green section here, which is the weapon, is next to the motor. That would be a direct drive system. And yeah, I don't like this. This motor is way too exposed. Any good horizontal is going to completely wipe that out. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's a no from me, basically. As much as I really want to do this because I know that it can be done, this just does not feel like the right way to go. So instead, we are going to try and do a uh, different system where the motor is more protected. But instead of doing a belt, because again, I still really don't want to do a belt, we're going to do something different. Gears! That's what we're going to try and do. So this is just a couple of very basic gears done up in Fusion 360. One of them is set up and ready for the brushless motor. The other one I'm going to mount the weapon blade into using a similar system that I used in the old one, except for this time we're going to use heat insert nuts on one side and let the bolt sit in through the other side. And I'm probably just going to uh, duplicate that for both sides, even though I don't need the gears on the second side. I probably will just keep them there because it's going to be easier than messing around with Fusion and removing the gear teeth from this stack up for a second version. Anyway, it is time to print some of these stuff up and uh, do a test. Okay, so here's all the parts, well, a lot of the parts, enough to do a prototype anyway. This is the new main chassis. The other thing I didn't mention when we were looking at the CAD is I have changed the back of the design now. So the new version basically doesn't have any wheel guards on it at all, which means if we have the weight, we can add thicker wheels, which means we can actually get more of a push on our opponents. And also means that if anything gets hit back here, it's actually not gonna jam the wheels up. Uh, also, I'm not sure if it's going to be visible on camera or not, but these ones here are actually chewed out in the back corners here where I'd printed them to be a wheel guard, but then needed to file and cut them back because the print kind of warped in a little bit. So it was actually jamming up the wheels 
as it was anyway. Uh, so yeah, basically they were just a little bit useless. Uh, and then on this side, we have our gears, which are done with fusion. So these are now replacing these old weapon mounts that sit in here, these guys in gray. Uh, so hopefully these gears will actually do the job for us. So let's get all of this stuff together. So this really hasn't gone according to plan. Uh, yeah, this, this, it looks interesting. The gears, I knew they were gonna be a little bit oversized, but I did not realize quite how much. You can see that they, uh, they stick up there over the edge of the armor plate. They also are actually larger than the weapon itself. So this whole thing is just messed up in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah, and I need these gears to be this size so that we actually fit our motor in like that. And, oh, huh. yeah, hang on, let me just see if I can get a better angle of this. Um, yeah, I think we've actually messed that up as well. Yep, yep, so our gears don't line up and they don't mesh. Uh, <laughs> well, they do, they can mesh if it's not actually attached. Oh no. Oh. So I've been trying to come up with a solution to this problem in CAD and I mean really trying. I mean look at this mess. There is just so much going on in this CAD file right now where I have tried time and time again to fix this issue. Uh, basically the aim was to try and keep this purple uh, 1806 in here, but I think the only way I can do it is to shrink down to a smaller size motor. I did even go back to this idea of trying to have the 1806 in next to the thing and it just, it causes the bot to end up so wide. Even this thing where I tried to keep it as short as possible, I'm at like 16 centimeters from side to side or something, which is just it's crazy. I can't do that in this arena. It just is not going to work for us at all. Um, yeah, so that basically leaves this back section where I've gone down to a smaller motor and we're gonna have to see if this works. So let's try all of this stuff again. Get this thing together uh, and see what happens. Now I need to pull some of the parts out of here though the bearings that I have in here are, I think the only M4 bearings I have. I think I have some spares sitting around somewhere, but I couldn't find them earlier. So we're just gonna do the easy way and take this stuff out. Hmm, okay, so I think while I do that, we're just gonna steal this motor off of the hug robot. Yep, there we go. Cool, that's what we need. And done. <laughs> so it kind of works. Spinning the drum spins up the motor at the back. If you can kind of see that, just about probably. Uh, yeah, so it seems to be working. It does uh, click a little bit. That's because I had to make some concessions in the actual chassis design. The first big one, of course, being that nice little lump down there that has been cut out to allow the gear to run properly. Uh, it's not been cut out properly, so it does actually touch on that and click from time to time. Uh, yeah, and then also there was a cut up the top here in this top panel to actually get the motor in in the first place. Eventually I will cut that motor down and everything will work okay. But for now, yeah, that's not a happening thing. Uh, so, oh, hey, actually, no weight on it. It seems to spin quite freely. So that's interesting. Um, 
Yeah, so there's a few little bits and pieces and tweaks and changes I probably need to make to this. I don't know if I've got time to do those though, that is the problem. So I might pull this back down and see if I can just modify this again with a file, get this down working nice and correctly. The other thing that we need to make note of is if my camera can focus on this. Yeah, there is a only a very, very tiny little gap between the weapon and the motor itself, which it's kind of scary. <laughs> it's like less than a millimeter and I'm really not sure how well I'm getting this on camera, uh, but it's less than a millimeter between the bar and the actual motor, which that's kind of scary, but that's as good as I'm gonna get it with this gear shaped drive. Uh, considering the problems that I've already faced with this, it may be possible that this is the only gear shaped drive or the geared weapon drive I ever do. Uh, I might move on from a geared weapon drive very, very quickly after this robot, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and uh, fix this thing up a little bit, get that uh, underside working, and then we'll see if we can hit something with this, I think. So that's working pretty well. Some kind of final notes on this guy. Uh, it's currently 12 grams underweight, which means I could put the heaviest drum on it, but I'm also gonna swap the entire chassis out for ABS. This is just a very quick PLA print as a proof of concept. The gear system, beautiful. That works really, really well. Once again though, we'll swap it out for ABS when the time comes, just to have that be uh, nice and solid and just make sure that the PLA doesn't shatter. Uh, there's a few small upgrades I need to do uh, just to make sure I don't have to keep knocking holes out of the chassis like I showed you guys. I actually extended some of the holes because it was still clicking a little bit. I also want to change the front shape uh, because the weapon does not actually stick out past the front of the arms here and that is actually something that was designed intentionally originally uh, when the drum was a full drum and it wasn't, uh, it was all plastic and it wasn't actually metal. So that's something I want to fix going forwards because I'd like the weapon to be the first point of contact. Uh, so yeah, we'll change that down a little bit. We'll keep the forks where they are. We're just going to move the arms, the mounting arms back a little bit. Also, I need to widen my wheelbase out just a little bit. The wheels are still kind of protected, uh, so they're gonna move out just so I've got enough space to put the DF robot motors in properly, and also probably shrink the whole robot in a little bit because there is more space in there than I need, essentially. Uh, so there's a lot of little tweaks and changes, but realistically, this gear system was what I was testing today, and yeah, that works. That works really, really well. Uh, we obviously had a few Kind of rocky starts with that, but it's going now. So that's on the docket for this guy. Uh, before it gets fought, it will get those upgrades uh, with ABS prints and all that kind of stuff. I probably won't do that in a video. I'll probably just kind of like do a quick little five second, hey, here's some updates before a fight video with it in it. However, I don't really know when that video is gonna happen because uh, my priorities may change. BattleBots has just announced that they are having the new season of BattleBots. Uh, so within the next couple of videos here, I'm hoping to put a video out that kind of updates you guys on Bolt, uh, which was my heavyweight application for this year. 
And after we've done that, we'll have a bit of a talk about a whole bunch of things. So uh, yeah, my time may not go into Don't Need Roads, but we'll talk a bit more about that when we talk about BattleBots Season 5. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next video.